Um, before we get started, I would love for you to describe, and I usually ask my viewers or my guests, if you were to just describe your family, the Coleman name and an adjective, um, who is the Coleman family? Who is Gigi Coleman? Well, the Coleman family, um, I think are some awesome people, uh, especially because we have that uh, DNA of a Bessie, Bessie Coleman's blood in us. Um, I think we're, we're adventurous, we're uh, truthful, honest, giving people, and we want to inspire everyone to think about aviation as, as a career, especially our young people, and inspire everyone to follow their dreams um, and don't take no for an answer uh, like Bessie Coleman did. I love that quote, don't take no for an answer. And it sounds like you definitely are not taking no for an answer. The things that you have done, the things that your mother has done for your great, it'd be your great, great aunt, aunt. My great aunt. Great aunt, great aunt. One great. <laughs> uh, is amazing. Can you talk a little bit more about what it is that you do for people that don't know you? I know who you are, but can you describe, okay, what does your program entail to keep the legacy of, you know, Bessie and the family alive? Well, I tell everyone, my wonderful husband, David Quinn, he inspired me. Um, my mother, she's the one that really inspired all of us. Um, she got the postage stamp in 1995. Um, she got the street sign uh, with the mayor of city of Chicago, Mayor Richard M. Daly in 1991 around that time. And uh, she did essay contests. She used her own money to try to get the people to be aware of Bessie. Uh, Ramon Price helped her at the museum, uh, the Sabo Museum with um, Miss Margaret Burroughs and Mr. Rufus Hunt. He was an aviation historian and he started the flyover again, which started in 1977 with the women pilot of Gary uh, flying over Aunt Bessie's grave. She's buried at uh, Lincoln Cemetery in Osceola, Illinois. Mm -hmm. And um, so since my mom was doing so much and, you know, radio, I mean, she just interviewed with everyone. She was just really trying to get a Bessie's out there. And when mama got the Alzheimer's, of course, I had to stop kind of work with my mom and go to different affairs for her. I remember one time we went to um, the museum in Detroit, the African-American Museum. And I remember, you know, she was up on stage and she was a little confused and everything. So I got up and I kind of talked. And ever since then, I kind of was helping her be like the spokesperson for the family because that's what my mother was. And um, when she died, my husband was like, well, you know, who's going to keep the legacy going? I'm like, I don't know who's going to keep it going. It ain't going to be me. I mean, you know, I'm not into all that. And so... He said, well, you need to do something. So then I decided to do this one woman show. And that's, I wrote out a little script and I remember what my mother told me. I remember what my granny told me. And I remember, you know, little things like Jerry Taft coming to the house. He used to work for Channel 7 News, the weatherman. And different people would come and interview my granny. And I remember her sitting on that little red couch and talking about a Bessie and you know, and everything. And my mother, people would come in and interview her. And, and I remember her talking and I remember people asking about Bessie to her. People, Mr. Uh, Doris Rich, she wrote a book, the first, well, one of the first books about Bessie and they called her Queen Bess. And she came, interviewed my mom and she went all over different places, you know, where Aunt Bessie traveled, where she went to, you know, down in Wachihachi. And I, I wrote out my little script based on all this stuff. And then books that, um, you know, my Annie Lois Patterson, she was Bessie Coleman's sister. So she wrote the first little, wasn't a book. It was like mostly like a pamphlet about her sister and stuff. So I, I looked at that and saw all the little details. I put that all in my little script. And then I made up some stuff as well as two. And I, it was a hit. I, my first show was at Villa Park Public Library, and they thought I had been doing this for years. And they said, well, how long have you been doing, Bessie? I said, oh, a couple of years. You know, I hate to say lying through my teeth. That was my first show. That was in 2013. 
And so then after that, I was going all over to air and space museums. I would call them, you know, they were like, oh yeah, we would love to come. Now other, now get, don't get me wrong. Other people were doing Bessie, but uh, Dr. Chamberlain, she was telling me, you know, Gigi, you are the DNA. And if anyone wants to hear about Bessie, they want to hear from a family member, a relative, and you're the living relative. And so I got a lot of per people wanting me to come out and do a performances and tell her story. Schools, libraries, museums, I've been everywhere. Um, so I dress in character and I tell her story. Um, I think it's better than having a lecture. Anybody can come out and talk. But when you see the person in character and they're telling the story, it makes you feel that you're part of the story. And I think that's what really excites the people and get them really motivated about Bessie's story, especially the young kids. Because I do it for high school, grade school, just everybody. So then after that, I decided to do this uh, aviation program. My husband said, why don't you do aviation? I said, I don't know nothing about aviation. He said, you ain't got to know anything about aviation. You can run an aviation program. Just get someone to help you. So I got two teachers, um, Mr. William Cummings, he's an aeronautical engineer, and Mr. Derek Henry, and he's an aviation teacher. And he taught out of New York for over 30 years, but he was part of, when I was growing up, part of working with my mother um, and the Dodo chapter of the uh, Tuskegee Airmen in Chicago. And so he would always be at the graveside filming when um, we were uh, doing, um, when they were doing the flyover. So I met him one day when I was fixing to do a show at the Woodson Public Library. He was in town. He said he had moved back because his mother was sick and he had moved back to Chicago. And we just hit it off. I told him what I was doing. He said, oh, I would love to help you. I told your mother, I would always be supportive of whatever you did. I was like, okay, well, come on. So I started the program. So the program started in two, everything started 2013. Okay. And I've been going ever since. 